going on ladies and gents, Dalibor here for T3G and welcome to App Spotlight. This is where we do reviews, overviews, and just deeper looks into software that's free or easy to get or just really useful. Today, we're gonna to be talking about JDisk Report for the Mac. Stay tuned. So we're going to be looking at JDisk Report. Now, if you're not familiar with Mac systems, if maybe you got your first Mac and, and you want to find out where your disk space is going, we're going to take a look at about this Mac. And as soon as that pops up for us here, we're going to go under storage. And then when you open the storage tab, that's actually going to give you some breakdown, a little, little bar graph here. And uh, if you mouse over them, it's going to give you details. But the nicer way to look at this is to go into manage and it's going to give you a much more detailed breakdown. Now, the one thing I'm not seeing for some reason is apps, which is weird, but I mean, I suppose it could be under system in this case. And this is why this gets weird because there should be an application section here. Initially, uh, it showed 15 gigs in system and then it kind of sorted itself out. And now, as you can see, I don't even see an application section. That's why I like using a third party software that takes a hard look at physically where the data is on your drive in, this, in the actual folder structure. So that's why when I first got a Mac, originally my MacBook Pro, I said, hey, how can I use something like Space Sniffer that I have on my Windows computers that will kind of do a deep dive and figure out where my data is. And I used uh, alternative2.net, which I've talked about before. That brought me to Jay Goody's JDisk report. So I actually don't have it installed on my computer, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. Now there is versions for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and WebStart. I don't even know what WebStart is, but we're gonna obviously not click on Windows. I don't know why I clicked on Windows. We're gonna click on Mac OS. We're gonna get rid of this exafile, because uh, exa files don't mean anything on here. All right, so now that's open and downloads pretty quickly. Uh, it's right there, it's gonna be in the folder. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump it into the actual applications folder uh, so that it's within my applications. I actually might even, might even drag it over into utilities because that's where the disk utility is, authenticates, boom. And password which is of course password, because that's the most successful password in the planet. And that's where I'm gonna launch it from. Uh, now this is just, shush you, shush, shush. Now with the newer versions of Mac OS, you'll see this kind of thing where it's like, hey, yeah, I'm aware that, it, yeah, I know. Control click, okay. Open. Open. Hmm. Well, that's a new thing I learned. Unable to load Java. Well, that's the other requirement then, isn't it? We definitely need to have Java. So let's go ahead and install Java real quick because, you know, things I haven't done in my spare time. All right. So the latest version of Java is installed. Now, let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. All right. So this is going to be your initial setup you're gonna hit next accept finish and this is where it's normally going to open to now you can have a previously saved scan if you want to uh, I always just do a fresh scan and I of course go from the root folder you can if you just want to take a look at your directory you can but I want to look at everything now I am very versed in software and and poking around and I've broken plenty of things to know what I should and shouldn't mess with. So if you're not comfortable with this, uh, you can go through your user folder uh, and that has a little more leeway, but certain folders like the library folder under your user is something you never, ever, ever want to touch because there's just a bunch of stuff in there that if you delete it could mess with the way your system works, period. Like you may not be able to log in. It may just affect a lot of stuff. All right, so when that actually finishes, you've got a look at everything, and it's in a nice uh, pie chart. Pie chart is the correct term. But on top of that, on the left, you've also got a breakdown by folder, and then if you don't like the pie chart, you can change to a different pie chart. I don't know what this is. Uh, or you can go with a bar graph, which some people like prefer. I like the pie chart because it makes more sense to me. There's no other reason, really. 
So clearly we've got about 12 gigs in application, 7.9 gigs in system. So that's not too far off what we saw here. See again, this has lost its mind. Now there's only 5.85 in system and still no, this actually doesn't even, I don't think add up to the 40 something gig, whatever. We're not using that anymore. In here, we've got 23 in, in users, 12 in applications. So let's take a look at applications. Um, pretty straightforward, you know, nothing I don't recognize. Cool. So we're going to close that. We're going to go back to the main view system. I'm not going to mess with anything in the system. Most of it's going to be in the library. Again, not really touching that. The other library, there's three libraries. If there's only one user, every user has its own library. So if you have like five users, you've got seven libraries. That was quick math for you. Uh, the last section was the last section. This is the something user again None of this really matters provided that you take a look at your applications and you don't see anything you don't recognize apps Take about you know half a gig, you know 650 megs to three gigs to five gigs sometimes more depending on what you've got uh, some software is just naturally large. But in users, that's where you can see the most. Obviously, that's my folder. And then we've got a public folder, uh, which is probably my transfer stuff to my other computers. Uh, I've got nine gigs in the library. Like I said, this is very, very dangerous ground because you can mess with stuff there. You can screw up your system. Uh, but in pictures, again, we've got eight gigs. And that's you know easy to manipulate because then you can say, hey, I don't need these pictures. I can offload these pictures to a different computer, etc. Let's take a look at the public, uh, what is it, what folder is this? Public Dropbox, it looks like. No? I feel like you're a liar. Oh, there, there must be just the one file. Um, nope, nope, nope. Close it, close it, yeah. Can I, nope. Okay, so let's just open that up. Boom, public, yep, just the one file there. I've got a, a Snow Leopard install file. Uh, so that's the only thing there. So the, the, the reason there's nothing else here is because it's only showing the one file. Uh, and I think if you switch to this view, yeah, files in this directory, and it's going to say 5.7 gigs. So that's how you find where the majority of your stuff is. Uh, like I said, when I'm looking at my pie chart, uh, and then again, library, there's just way too much here that you could mess up. Uh, I don't really touch it and I move on with my life. Two gigs in mail, uh, and that's something, like if you take a look at that and you say, hey, there's two gigs in mail, you can say, all right, let me take a look at my mail and you know go through old attachments, old emails that I can get rid of, things like that. The other nice features in this, you've got a top 50 list. So this is gonna give you a list of the top 50 largest files. So then you can take a look at, hey, uh, you know I've got this uh, movie, this is uh, July 25th, 2017. I think these were, uh, this was an editing. This was an editing thing that I did uh, from a trip. I think. I think I had some. It was a vlog that I was recording for our vlog channel. Uh, this is the the 5.7 gig install file, and then underneath that, they're all little little things that just kind of add up. And again, it's just the top 50 largest. That's the thing is, under 50 megs, you could have you know five million files that are smaller than that, and that's a lot of system files are small, but there's just numbers of them. There's just many of them because they, they just add up to do different things. Uh, you've got size distribution, you know, what, and this is kind of just a snapshot of like what things, where your sizes are, like what, how many files do you have that are in those chunks? How much have you accessed recently versus a long, long time ago? Uh, six to 10 years, this is literally impossible. I've only had this computer for a year. And then you've got types here. So MOVs and no type files. These are probably system files. Uh, 10 gigs, uh, DMG, so that's my installer. You know, so it, it gives you some breakdowns and some options of what is going on. And just once again, I wanna let you know, the address for this website is jgoodies.com. Uh, and then it's going to have a freeware section under which you're going to see the JDisk report. I'll also, of course, link it down below so you guys can check it out. It's a completely free software, and it's been a huge, huge tool for me in the Mac OS. All right, so that is actually it for this one. Just a quick look into something that can be very helpful in figuring out what is taking up all that space. Thanks very much for watching. If you are not subscribed, please do join us. We do these videos every Wednesday. We have tech videos on Mondays. We have our theme Thursdays. We have gameplays on Fridays. 
And we got something new coming up in the future that's gonna be pretty fun for Saturdays. Just trust me on that one. So join us, hit like if you liked the video, and we'll see you guys in the next one.